G'day guys, and today I'm going to review the game which is between Geelong and St Kilda. St Kilda getting the job done by 10 points and another loss for Geelong going to 5 and 4. Disappointing uh, game to watch. Um, yeah, and just lots of things that I've seen for, I suppose, uh, 10 years and still being problems. And, um, you know, today was, you know, people might go, oh, you only just lost, but, well, it's it's probably, uh, it's a bit more than that. It's, you know, it's an eight-point game. Um, it's a team around you. It's a team that, you know, if you beat, that you kind of stamp yourself as a, a side that might be contending. Uh, lose it, you go to five and four, all of a sudden you look a bit shaky and... Yeah, now you're just making up the numbers in the eight. And as mentioned uh, a couple of weeks in the Dockers review, in uh, no man's land. So the cliff's coming. Um, so, yeah, if I'm doing a, a rough prediction from here, I'd be probably saying, yeah, we're making up the numbers, you know, in that bottom part of the top eight. We'll get knocked out first week of finals and then, yeah, hopefully we have some serious discussions. And that's if we're good enough to make the eight in the first place. Um, but, yeah, I can sort of go through the fixture and, and whatnot, but it's just been constantly... It was, we won two in a row, I think, at some stage, but it's just constant win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. Just like the uh, 2019 Cats in that second half of the season. And, yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to build continuity when you're showing up every two weeks. Um, yeah, we played some good football throughout the afternoon, for sure. Um and gave ourselves, you know, a chance to win. But, yeah, it's more more of the same, really, that I've, I've seen for a very long time. So, I mean, we, you know, reasonable start. We probably could have kicked six in the first term and, you know, kick four. Um, kick six, eight till half time. Probably should have nine on the board instead of, you know, instead of six. And that all of a sudden makes it a five-goal lead. I mean, realistically, we probably should have been six and a half goals up and then we're only... I don't know, 20, 20 something points up, which, you know, it's nothing in modern football. I think we got 22 up and one more goal in that third term would have made it interesting. Um, so, I mean, yeah, for the first two and a half quarters, um, we had the game, you know, in reasonable stead, reasonable control. The Saints definitely um, didn't make the most of their chances and they were a little bit fumbly here and there. But, um, yeah, look, I, I felt our pressure was good early and, yeah, we were able to sort of, you know, make some pretty dangerous dents up forward. Um, yeah, and it seemed like our back line was, was in pretty good shape. Um, structure held up pretty well, but... Yeah, I mean, when you lose it, you focus on the, the bits that stand out. And, you know, that third term in particular kicked seven goals. Um, the best long teams that I've seen uh, don't really let a team get on a run like that. For a long team like that, conceded two or three in a row, they'd stop it in its um, in this entirety. But yeah, this Geelong team just does not seem to know how to cope when the pressure lifts and when the game, you know, when all the momentum's going one way, they they have no answers for it. They haven't had any answers for it for ten years, and I'm sick of seeing no answers to it. How how do we not have a a response or a remediation for a team that gets on a run? We it comes down to work rate, most importantly, and just hunting. We we don't have that ability to hunt and other teams hunt us. And then, you know, it's like you're hoping a team won't beat you that way. And I'm sick of being beaten the same way every time that we lose. It's in a very similar manner. It's not hard to beat you along. If you bring great effort, pressure, and have half the ability to hit a target and lower your eyes, you'll win. Oh, it's really, really easy to beat you along. Um, so, yeah, the difference between their best and worst in quarters is the, the gap is just too wide and that's why we're seeing, you know, these kinds of, um, you know, momentum shifts in a game and yeah, we had a bit of a go in the last term, but yeah, this, this part of the game too is frustrating. We've kicked 118 goals, 126 this year and I'm... I'm over not being able to convert for for a side that has to be efficient um, and may not get you know as many chances as they'd like. You know clearly this is this is where we have to improve. Um, and and when Geelong have the momentum, they don't put you away. They always keep you in the game. Like 
there was a couple of plays in that first term where we should have had an, a really easy goal and yeah like you know Cameron had a chance and you know didn't didn't sit up for him and that could have been an easy goal but just I feel like really easy goals just never happen for Geelong and, and I mean that that's just that's just um yeah it all comes down to you know a little bit of luck a little bit of work rate and just game playing game now and yeah we just got torched at stoppage the reason we lost the game was our inability to be able to respond and uh, you know not being able to pick up the ground ball i've i can't harp up harp enough harp enough about this ground ball it's just absolutely demolishing us um it was there was a good 10 minutes there where we just couldn't find the ball. We couldn't get a clearance. We, we couldn't buy a clearance. Just one would have maybe maybe helped stem the flow a bit, but the Saints just kept going. And to their credit, you know, it's a great effort from the Saints. I don't want to say it's all Geelong's fault. I mean, the Saints just worked harder. They applied pressure. They hunted us, and they were able to sort of, you know, execute. They missed a few chances as well, and the scoreboard might flatter us, flatter us a little bit, you might say, but... Um, I mean, clearly I'm going to be talking more on a Geelong front and what they did right and what they did wrong. They did a, a fair bit right in the first two and a half quarters and had the game on their terms, but once a team gets a run on us and, like, the crowd gets involved, like, we, we crumble. Um, it, it's And it hasn't changed for 10 years. And, you know, the constant over the last 10 years has been the senior coach. So... Uh, and they're in a rush to re-sign him every, every single year. So, um, anyway... Yeah, it's it's a bit torturous at the moment, just not being able to um, just beat sides around us, and yeah, it's yeah, pretty tough, pretty tough watching on. This was kind of like I don't know if you want to call it Groundhog Day, Doomsday, or the you know the day where you really get found out. Well, today was Argelong a, a genuine contender, um, and they had that question a few weeks ago against Fremantle. They failed that test. Okay, Dockers were good, and this is second chance. Fool me twice, and they failed it again. So, um, not to say to the cats to just pack up and not worry about it for the rest for the rest of the year, but um, Geelong aren't winning a premiership in season twenty two, and I can just about guarantee that to be the case. Um, we'll we'll win plenty of games, or you know, a decent number of games, and probably feature somewhere. Seventh to eighth, or maybe six, if um, if everything were to go right. But you can't do much damage from there, unfortunately, unless you're the Western Bulldogs, um, which we don't have that kind of uh, fight, fight and bite about us. But yeah, um, yeah, St Kilda too good, but they were yeah. I mean, any side can absolutely um, put you to the sword when when they get time and space, which the Saints did. Uh, the lack of forward pressure is just another deficiency in our game that just continues to haunt me in my sleep. <laughs> oh, just, I feel like the opposite happens to whatever the opposition is doing. When we get the ball out of the centre, there's 50 blokes hanging off us and there's the pressure everywhere. The moment the opposition gets it, they've got all the time and space in the world. They, they can walk it out of the stoppage. If it goes into our, our forward 50, you know, defenders are right on us. You know, they've outnumbers everywhere and... Um, you know, the moment it hits the ground, they're, they're straight out. But, you know, when it goes into the Saints forward 50 or an opposition forward 50, you know, it's immediately, we're under pressure. Um, we, we've got no time and space and it's, yeah, it's, everything's opposite half the time. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's hard, being, um, hard being a Cats fan. We'll go through some of the numbers. But that's kind of how the game went. And Geelong failed it and then I'll test you again. But I mean, you could even argue they beat Fremantle, they beat St Kilda. All of a sudden, they're seven and two. They probably still lose finals anyway. So, what 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 blueprint is there for Geelong to look different going into a finals campaign, other than being able to play just be better in the finals? Um, yeah. So the Saints obviously had more of the footy. They yeah clearly had their had their game going there. We usually average a lot more inside fifties than that. Um, usually get close to that 60 mark each week, but it was pretty even. Um, disposal efficiency, pretty similar. And yeah, I mean, Saints go in 6 out of 10, score 6 out of 10 times. We score 4.5 times out of 10. That's the difference. 
Um, and I mean, going into further detail on that, the midfield just needs a revamp. Like it's it's not working. You know, it's not good enough to get the job done. It can't be on Paddy and Joel every time to to step up. We need the next Paddy and Joel to stand up. And you know, if they don't stand up, we look pretty pretty hopeless. So. Um, get Cooper Stevens in there, play him for eight weeks, see what happens, give him a go. Free kicks are the same. Uh, clearances probably flattered us, but our clearances are probably one metre handballs and then they're turned over, but anyway. So, so, I'm so defeated, honestly. It's not it's not just Geelong lost, but they, they prob they've basically said we're not a top... We're, we're not going to contend this year, is what Geelong said to me today. And that hurts. Like that, that's a bit of piddle swallow. I kind of alluded to that with the Fremantle game. I was pretty defeated after that. And you know, a decent win against the Giants, who have had, you know, a bit of a monkey on the back of late against the Cats. I thought, oh, okay, but then I was like, oh, the Giants are probably bottom six side or in reality. And you know, it was a decent win uh, away from home. But but yeah, I mean, these are the games that, that matter, and when things manage along don't seem to uh, be able to put up the fight uh, contested ball uh, we've lost a lot of contested ball in a lot of games which is you know doesn't help you winning um, and the Saints definitely bashed us up in that third term uh, so yeah they got a bit more on the outside than we did turnovers kind of surprised me yeah, a bit, a bit surprising that's the case. Um, they have more marks. They have more marks inside 50. We usually average you know, 16 marks inside 50. So, again, they limited our supply a little bit. And, yeah. We're in front for a fair bit of it, but just um, died just died in the arse in the second half. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a poor, poor stat as well. The big thing is work rate. Work rate is effort, and we just don't front up with enough effort each week, week in, week out. Saints got the job done there nicely. Tackles inside 50. That's our one of our Achilles heels. Um, yeah, a few 1%. There's probably a lot of defensive punches, but not really much else other than that. Ooh. All right, votes. Uh, I'll give two of the three votes. Um, it was pretty kind of tricky for the votes today because a lot of players were down on their average, on the, their usual um, output. He had 26, two goals, uh, six marks, four clearances. I thought he cracked in really hard, had some really good one-on-one -on -one contests and took the game on and I feel like he yeah, set up some good, um, good forays forward for us. Uh, I'll give the two votes to Tom. Uh, he kicked four, four of our eleven goals, a fair chunk of our score. Uh, fourteen, yeah, fourteen touches, seven marks, and six hitouts as well. A couple of tackles in there, goal assists. So, yeah, he was um, he was pretty solid throughout the night. He missed a missed a sitter, but thankfully he backed up and found a way to kick it. The next time after that horrendous turnover from McKenzie. And I'm giving the one vote to Tommy Atkins, actually. Uh, he got 18, four marks, and five tackles. And, you know, just his, his willingness to, yeah, find a way to yeah, stop the Saints when they were pressing was really good. He, he laid some really hard tackles in there, and I was super impressed by it. And um, he was the only bloke really putting in that kind of effort for that, you know, on the defensive side of the game. So those are my votes. Uh, Stuart. Had 27, nine marks. I um, mean, stats look nice, but I reckon it's one of his worst games he's ever played. He probably dropped about 10 marks, to be honest. Um, I've just never seen him drop so many marks. He looked pretty uh, pretty shocked. Yeah, I don't know. Shell-shocked. Uh, Isaac Smith was all right. He kicked a goal, 23. Um, normally gains a fair few metres. And, yeah, it was, was solid throughout the day. Good, good bit of running carry through the middle when we are on top. Blitzavs, um, you know, played all right, but, you know, Ryder kicks three and Marshall kicks one and four goals from their Ruckman and um, nothing out of our Ruckman. So that's, um, that's where the game's won. <laughs> one of the components for the game's won and lost. 
Um, Duncan was all right when things were going well for us, but I don't think he really did much when the chips were down. I barely saw him, to be honest, when when the Saints were, uh, you know, on top. Uh, Zach Guthrie, look, he was okay, but just had some horrendous turnovers and shocking moments that he liked back again. So, you know, battled and tried, and he was okay. Um, 23, missed, missed a goal. Didn't realise he had 10 clearances, actually. So, you know, um, pretty good effort overall from Joel. Makes me go ahead of the give Atkins a vote, but not Joel. I'm cracking in, but, I mean, when we lost as a result of the midfield, Looks like Joel tried pretty hard, but didn't have enough mates to go with him. Uh, Guthrie kicked a nice goal. Um, 23. Didn't handball it that much. Um, three clearances. Uh, Jeremy Cameron kicked one goal, two, 15 touches. Um, eight marks. So he got someone involved, but wasn't wasn't really dangerous. He didn't really get the greatest delivery and probably didn't make the most of his chances. O'Connor was a bit... You know, a bit fumbly, a bit, a bit uh, exposed with the ball. Parf had one good kick, and then I reckon the rest were just um, horrendous. <laughs> he's a horrible kick. He's slow. He's yeah. Anyway, I mean, he gets he gets a game though. Uh, Paddy got twenty one. He's pretty quiet. Couple of clearances, couple of tackles. He lifted at times, but yeah, I, I don't think we can constantly expect Paddy to get 30 and kick threes. Um, yeah, I mean, he's 30, 32 now and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, we just can't... Ex just got to have other blokes that step up. That's not Paddy. Knuckle, I think he was playing with butter, honestly. So many fumbles. It's absolutely crazy. I'm ready to put a line through him, honestly. He's had, he's had enough time to find his feet, and he's just... Yeah, he just fumbles it. He doesn't work hard enough. He's lazy. He's, um, you know, just never has, never has that killer instinct and just that desperation that we severely need. And he's just, he just chills, just gets the paycheck and goes home and says, see you later. Um, when I see him play, it just doesn't feel like it matters to him as much as it does to Joel or Paddy. Um, they just, they've got these blokes just cruising along. It's, um, it's not good enough. I think Cole Jasting actually played a, a decent game. Um, ground ball's not his go, but I felt like he, he had some good one-on-one -on -one wins. Um, I'll, watch, I'll watch him very closely because I, I do give him a lot of criticism. De Koning loves a, loves a handball. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think he did overall pretty pretty okay, all considering. Stengel had a probably quieter game. Um Maybe not as enough enough services you'd normally get, but yeah, he kicked the one goal too. Um, yeah, some tackles would have helped. Uh, yeah, Myers kicked a goal from five meters out, and for the rest of the game didn't really do much. And a lot of conjecture about why he's in the side. Stanley very very quiet. Um, yeah, didn't really have much of an impact at all. And you know, Marshall and Ryder had a field day. They kicked four between him and. Um. Yeah, and they kick nothing between them. Uh, Nevitt's definitely a category or two below the level. I would have thought. Um, the game was pretty hot this week, and yeah, he had a bit of the ball. Um, close played probably. Yeah, I mean, as the stats suggest, normally one of their reliable players. Um, you know, a young player. I guess you're gonna have down games, but he's one player that usually back into to play really, really well. And unfortunately, he just wasn't quite up for it. I suppose you can have some down games sometimes, but yeah, close has been super consistent. I suppose every now and again that can happen. We've got Port Adelaide next week. This one's at GMHBA Stadium Saturday afternoon. Porter in really good touch, actually, and you know, we're traveling okay, but um, yeah, 50, well, probably 60 40 game. I mean, I think Geelong will win, um, being at home doesn't really. I mean, unless we win by 100 points, it doesn't really change um, much of my narrative sort of moving forward. Um, our best chance was 2020 and we, we blew it. So, you know, that's that's, uh, that's the way the, the cookie crumbles sometimes. But, yeah, Port LA definitely very dangerous and have a fair bit going on up forward. So, again, it, it just comes down to does our midfield want to hunt and fight? We don't lose two in a row very often, so that's why I think we'll win. 
we're really good at win win loss win loss so um and that's why we haven't been a good finals team because we we can't rock up for more than two weeks in a row i'm looking very forward to uh what scotty says probably not going to really address much at all it was good that he had a spray a bit of a spray three quarter time to the to the group but um yeah i just don't think this group just quite doesn't quite have that that instinct in them um if they're not willing to hunt and pressure and scrap and fight you know that's what the best teams have done that's what's won premierships for years and years and years so read the room and, and see what's actually been successful and try and emulate that but um geelong are pretty comfortable trying their pathway which has failed for the last 10 years but anyway that's it for me guys hope you enjoyed the review my saltiness me being sad um and subscribe if you haven't already to to see me um hopefully in a better mood next week but uh, it kind of feels largely inconsequential unless there's significant changes um what happens in the next couple of weeks but yeah we'll, we'll likely win the next two or one of the next two um doesn't really change a hell of a lot though because against the best teams we've, we've fallen short um yet again so um yeah get some of these kids in get some of these kids in i'm not not riding the season off but we need we need to start thinking about guys like you know cooper stevens because the cliff's coming the cliff's coming so um that'll be that'll be the headline mark mark my words but yeah that's all all right thanks guys appreciate you watching in listening in and i'll see you all next time